Welcome back to um, this is lesson six of. Do we have an official title? The nope. OBS Ninja for Beginners. Maybe there's a big blank spot here for a title if we want to add one. <laughs> Again, I'm Chris in Germany. This no, this is Steve in Canada. Hello there. Maybe. So um, yeah, we have we have we're adding more and more interesting concepts to OBS Ninja, and this is uh, this this lesson is one about parameters because I think that's where the real power of OBS Ninja comes in. That's where you get the uh, where you get a feeling of um, the control you have over uh, different aspects of it, and that's yeah, that's like, yes. <laughs> this is this when when I found OBS Ninja and I learned about parameters and I saw what you can do with them. That's when that's when I was sold. That's like yes. That's exactly the right thing, and you. It helps if you have a bit of a tech mindset. It helps if yes. you, if you know what URL parameters are, and if you, if you're if you're happy, you don't really have to go to the command line, but you. It helps to be, to, it helps to, to be happy with configuring things to the I don't know to a really big extent, right? For sure. So it's kind of like FFmpeg if you've ever used it before. Oh right? yes, oh yeah. yes. It's a bit like that. Yes, it's uh, it opens up, and every time you dig into something, you open up another, another uh, secret door, and you find an entire other room with new parameters and things. So, um, what I want to do is just talk about a few of them. Um, I think a most important concept for me that I had to learn in the beginning was that some parameters. The parameters don't go everywhere. Some parameters go on the sending side, some parameters go on the receiving side, and some parameters go on both sides. What I mean is on the URL in the browser. Okay. So what Steve has done is he's sending me a secret stream. It's it's already sending, it's already running. And uh, to receive it, I'm just um, putting it in there, OBS Ninja slash question mark view equals Steve in Canada. And that just opens up his stream. So um, you can see that in uh, in OBS. Can you put it on the screen? Yeah, one second. That helps. Thank there you. we are. So you are, you're now seeing my browser window and my mouse cursor. And um, so far, so good. But uh, we have control. We have a lot of control by using parameters. And uh, we have uh, already presented a view of the, a few of them. Um, one would be the uh, ampersand video bitrate. I'm introducing to another concept, and there are aliases for the different parameters because I'm lazy. I want to not type those long words. So video bitrate, um, you can just type instead VB. VB equals. And let's make this really horrible looking 80. Now, video bitrate, 80 kilobits per second. Uh -oh. Yeah, well, but the, it's kind of amazing how much you can get over an 80 kilobit line. And it's, it's still, it, I mean, it's, it's very it's very low resolution, but the frame rate seems to be there. Um, let me add another parameter. And that would be a parameter to choose a different codec. Codec oh. equals. And uh, the default codec that the video gets con uh, gets encoded in is VP8. It's a Google codec. And uh, we can add VP9, which is a bit more complex. It does a bit more, uses a bit more processing power on the sending side. As the receiver, I can choose the codec. The sender cannot choose the codec. So I will request the VP9 codec from Steve's system. And if Steve's system can do that, it will deliver it to me. So. Now we have the same bit rate, 80 kilobits per second under VP9. And the quality is a bit better because the codec compresses the video better. And if we inch that up, let's say instead of 80, let's do 180. So I'm just changing a bit of bit rate. And at a 180, uh, the VP9 codec is fairly decent already. Well, it's, not, it's not perfect, but it's so much better than before. So you can get away with lower bit rates if the sending system supports VP9. And if it doesn't, then go back to VP8. And if it doesn't do that, go to the third codec that's supported, and that's H264, which is old and ancient, but it's still in use pretty much everywhere. I think iOS uses it mainly. Uh, iOS does, and a lot of videos that you 
I still have my hard drive full of H.264 videos. So there's some benefits of H.264. Some mobile devices offer hardware encoding support. So the iOS device will offer H.264 hardware encoding. So that saves battery life, keeps the phone cool, Mm -hmm. and it it will use it. It will use it by default Mm -hmm. um, on the iOS devices. Most other devices will use VP8 by default. Yeah, but if you if you if you I mean I I usually try this with guests that I get in on shows using OBS Ninja. I'll try to see if VP9 works on their system if their systems are powerful enough to support that. Um, if it if the systems aren't powerful enough, the symptom that I see most is that the video and the audio tend to go out of sync. The video slows down a bit because the CPU can't keep up with the encoding, and then the the audio stream is ahead of it and. Um, I think the way you, pro- you, you the way you program this is that like every five seconds it's, it catches up again. Uh, it, it tries to kick uh, a, a new keyframe out. It's, it's mainly to fix um, uh, when, when the image gets distorted. It, mm-hmm. it can sometimes help with um, keeping things in sync, but there is yeah. also a specific command, the buffer command that can. Uh, more succinctly fix sync issues. So let's do that. Let's add the buffer command. So as on the viewing side, again, I can add buffer equals, what would I put there? Zero, 100, 500? Uh, it's in milliseconds. So depending on how bad the sync is, you, you generally want to uh, intru- introduce a buffer that... Um, let's do 100 just... milliseconds. So mm-hmm. that adds a bit of a buffer that helps the video and audio stay in sync. That's also on the receiving side. Um, if you want to pull really high quality audio, now under the hood, um, we talked about video codecs. OBS Ninja uses for audio uses the Opus codec, which is an open source codec, very good sounding, very low latency codec. So that is really a good um, a good uh, match for for what whatever the video does. But if you want to increase that, if you want to crank this up, um, you can add another. Uh, command or another parameter which is called pro audio pro audio um which is an alias of stereo but i like the pro audio better because it tells me more what it does because the pro audio parameter turns off all the processing that that uh, that obvious ninja does in the background all the audio processing because normally there is echo cancellation which i mean you you see us, both of us, wearing headphones, um, which means there won't be any echo going back into the microphone. But if someone, if one of your guests is on a laptop and they just talk into the microphone that's built in, and they don't have headphones, then there will be uh, an echo loop. The audio from their speaker will loop back into their microphone. So echo cancellation is on by default. With Pro Audio, you turn that off. There is a noise reduction in there that's turned off. And there's automatic gain, which is turned off. So to keep your microphone at a certain level, if you want full control over the audio, use the pro audio parameter. And that's one of the parameters that has to be set on both sides. So um, for the sake of brevity, let's I'm just pulling that with that parameter. Um, but then what that does, it opens up, it opens up other things, as in uh, you could now manually, for example, add back in the echo cancellation. So EC is the parameter for that. Um, you could manually add in noise reduction. What's the what's the parameter for that? Hmm. I can't hear you. I think you're muted. I muted myself. Absolutely sorry. Uh, the long form version is denoise. Denoise. Okay. Uh, and so on. Just this is just to give you an idea what kind of parameters you can add and you can you get that idea that this URL up here this is turning a pretty enough to a pretty long thing over time so that's one of the reasons I'm a fan of ma- using shortcuts the VB for video bitrate AB for audio bitrate um, instead of pro audio or stereo you can just use s and so on and um, and by the way let me pull this at a better bitrate because you look very oh if you're gonna crank it up that high i might need to nah, we're doing three thousand does that work for you yeah seems to work um so the 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 urls get fairly long and um 
again, the shortcuts, the shorter versions are my favorite. And there is an address for you to check out to see all the parameters. And that is params.obs.ninja. That's a shortcut that gets you to the parameter overview page. And that's a very important page. You want to spend some time on that and look at the different sections. There is a section with parameters for both senders and viewers and parameters for just viewers and for just senders. And um, let's just look at a few of those. So there's a room ID or room or R. Here's a shortcut there, an alias for that. Uh, you can add a password to protect the stream so no stranger can look at it. Um, here's your stereo or pro audio or S parameter, uh, and so on and so on. I mean, this is a really long list. And this is kind of the, I, I've spent hours on that page and <laughs> I've tried out different combinations of parameters. I mean, you can set, for example, you can set the, um, the quality level on the sending side so that the sending browser will try to send you the highest resolution they can or a resolution that's a bit better for lower bit rates, for lower um, network connections. You can um, try to set a frame rate on the sending side. So if you are happy with just getting 10 frames per second, then you can tell the sending browser to only send 10 frames per second or crank it up to 60 if your system supports that. Um, we're even going into like video device selections. Uh, that will definitely be in a future episode when we will talk about how to automate setting everything up. Um, there's uh, an auto start parameter that helps you get a guest quicker into a session and uh, get them to select the camera later and so on. So I, I guess you get an idea that this is a very powerful system. And now with, with that page, again, params.obs.ninja, uh, with that page, I think we've opened Pandora's box and now everything is out and it turns into this real powerhouse of uh, video transfer. So um, if you want to know more, there is, okay, let me give you another shortcut and that is github.obs.ninja, which takes you directly to the OBS Ninja GitHub page where find more information where you find a lot of guides and things. Um, for example, here's a wiki, a link to a wiki, and that has the FAQ, and that has a lot of um, guides and things for you to get started. So uh, this here is not the only resource. Um, this is when you can start and browse and and so on. And um, let me see, the, we are, Almost done with our getting started series of episodes. There's one more to come. And I know that's going to be Steve's favorite. That's how to use OBS Ninja on a Mac. But that's a different episode, a different lesson. Uh, until then, I think we're done for now.